Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome back to Ree's Retro Toys. On today's episode, I'm here at my buddy Andy's house and we are going to go through his collection. Now Andy is uh, quite the collector. He's got a little bit of everything and I think you guys are really going to enjoy digging through his collection and he'll show off some prototypes and, and different pieces of his collection. We're also going to set him down here and, and, and do a little bit of an interview as well. Um, Andy is the creator of the Toys for the Ages Expo that's coming up in August at uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So Andy, what do you think? I'm ready to roll. We'll get to show everybody the collection and, um, you know, I, I love being a collector and I think that's the number one thing is uh, being able to enjoy the community, enjoy the toys. So we're going to spin around here and give you guys a glimpse of what I got. Excellent. Let's get to it. So I have a couple things here. Um, I've been collecting for a while now. It's been about seven years and uh, I'm working on a game room. Just didn't have a chance to, to get that finished. Hopefully it'll be sometime soon with stand-up arcades and bar stuff. So I've been trying to, um, once you collect everything, you don't know what else to collect. I've been getting into standees. So uh, we have this pretty rare Brave Star piece here. This is our uh, 1986. Uh, this was in a, like if you go in a toy shop, mm -hmm. uh, they would have this Brave Star display and uh, you know some toys behind that. And then we also have this, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, which he loves. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sandy, uh, this also, again, was in a, a toy shop in the awesome. 1989. It's made by Barrage. Um, so it's a cool piece. I have a couple other uh, standees, which I'm not going to have on display yet, but maybe we'll do another uh, tour of that. And then mm -hmm. I do have, uh, when you walk in the room here, I have two signed posters. Uh, you know, one of Jeremy Bullock from, uh, who was a Boba Fett character. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Pete Peter Wheeler. Weller, who was uh, played RoboCop. Excellent. I love RoboCop, so it's you know two cool pieces. And here we go. Absolutely. All right, guys, get ready. Step on in. It is sensory overload. <laughs> so yeah, we packed it all in here. This is uh, this is a spare bedroom, and um, it took me about seven years to collect what I collect here. And uh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> this is a lot for seven years. Uh, we have some some rare pieces here. We'll start in the corner here, but uh, everybody knows this Return of the Jedi poster. This is cool. You got this, and this, you know, I liked it because it showed the figures and showed mm -hmm. who they were. Um, that's a that's a rare uh, filmation Brave Star promo poster from 1987. Oh, that's great. Look at the artwork. That's a cool that. piece there. Um, I love the Godzooks. So this is Godzook. So when before Garbage Pail Kids came out, these were in the 70s. So they made fun of like um, grocery stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember as a kid getting that. So a lot of this stuff I, that I collect, uh, I remember as kids, you know, growing up. Sure. Uh, we have Garbage Pail Kid poster there of all the cards. Um, that's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle that was promoting the movie. That was, they were in Kmart at the time. That poster was pretty big. It was actually extended behind my my shelf here and then always you gotta have that massive oh, yeah. uh, poster from the 80s I mean that's just the artwork is, is pretty wild um, graded turtle stuff yeah graded turtles I just picked up the Kraken um, oh, yeah, yeah, everybody knows how tough that is mm -hmm. uh, the Kraken Clash of the Titans I also picked up Pegasus at uh, Steel City Con that's right Right. Got that and Toys R Us got the old Toys R Us diecast truck in the background there. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of hard to see, but got that in the back. Oh, yeah. Um, that night 2000 crash test set or crash set that's sealed contents in the box. Um, that Night Rider game is also sealed. Love the Night Rider stuff. Have the, the Night 2000, the Woodman, uh, great show. Michael Knight's in there, and then the key car and uh, the other vehicle there. Uh, humanoids. Uh, this was actually a Toy Store display as well. Uh, pretty cool, 1986, pretty cool 3D display. I love how they, they showed all the creatures. Yeah, they don't do that the, anymore. It's a killer line if anyone wants to get into a good, good line. Oh I my mean, gosh. By far, now that's not, that's a, that's a um, Soma. Um, can't think of the name of that. But uh, mm -hmm. I just put them with these humanoids. Um, this is a pretty rare uh, VHS uh, display. So that when it came out on um, video cassette, 
that's the actual um, display that was mm -hmm. on the counter, so mm -hmm. that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, just so much to look at. Oh my gosh, I mean, yes. Mad Balls, um, one of my favorite lines as a kid uh, was these rocks, bugs, and things. Um, very, very tough line to find. Um, a lot of people didn't know these exist, but they came with these little mortals. Um, and you would, you know, they do actions and they try to eat the mortals. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my mom buying me this rock one back here. I remember exactly having that as a kid. So super cool line. Uh, blurt balls. They're, I have the full blurt balls with the projectiles. They're a neat line. Um, these are pretty rare. Here's Goop's um, Frisbees. Um, oh, yeah. They're pretty cool from the 80s. Uh, not, I got the actual store display back there. We can remember Valentine's. Remember Valentine's as a kid? We'd go <laughs> into elementary school. Yeah. You got some mad ball Valentine's. you probably pick up some chicks with that. No, that's right. You had, to, you had to make your own Valentine box. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a pretty rare piece. So, um, never ending story. I uh, actually came out with a toy line. That's from Argentina. Uh, Valcor. Incredible. Um, you know, Matt didn't even know. I did not even know these existed. They existed, but they are in PVC. There's there's quite a few in the line. Um, but my buddy, um, Eric Marimaldi, up in Boston, decided he wanted to part with this. So he uh, gave me a call and said, hey. I said, sure. Send it down. Fantastic. So you can see Argentina, they never really did any back artwork or anything like that. But that's a pretty pretty rare piece yeah. there. Yeah, that is nice. So Andy, I've always liked to find out what really drives a collector and what they like to collect. So what draws you to collecting vintage toys? What What is, what is your passion, that catalyst? Basically, when I was a kid, my parents didn't have a whole lot of money. They were uh, Catholic. And uh, wasn't allowed to get certain toys, you know, with the fighting and the wizard, like they say, you know, the evil in them or whatever you want to call it. Um, and um, my parents were divorced when I was when I was young, uh, so we didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I was young, it was you know I didn't get a whole lot of stuff. Always went over friends' houses and played with their stuff, their Star Wars and GI Joe and uh, different toy lines. So. I just stumbled seven years ago. I went to an auction and I stumbled across some '80s toys that I had when I was a kid. And I was like, "Oh, these are cool, you know." Just bought them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bought them. And, and I don't know. Just turned a switch on, you know, and just, uh, just, just man, bringing back memories of, of when I went over to my friends' houses and played and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I said I'm getting older now, and I have money, and I'm just gonna start buying some of these toys, some of these these things that I. Uh, have when I was a kid mm -hmm. and believe it or not it's like plastic crack like they say it's plastic <laughs> crack it's plastic crack believe right. me like when you start you, you I mean you can't stop I mean it's just <laughs> and it's weird to say that but it is it's it's addicting like you you, you get this you're like oh I can't believe I got this when I was a kid now I want to get this because if I don't have this then it doesn't complete the line or um and so it just it's just re it was a revolving door yeah. and um, kind of snowballed so I'd buy collections and there's things I would keep out of it. Well, then I got to a point where I was just buying and buying and buying and had so much of it. So mm -hmm. um, it was just growing and I just kept feeding my addiction and buying stuff. And I had friends that I would be in contact with. They would help me find stuff. Um, my real friend, uh, Carlos Barone down in Florida, uh, he's been on um, Plastic Crack was another uh, YouTube thing and Amazon show he's been on that he's got a huge collection and he really helped me get started and get into the the collecting end of it because a lot of stuff I didn't know and there's a lot of information you need to know about when you're collecting and I'm a guy that likes original stuff so um, I'm always trying to look for, for for original things and I didn't know a whole lot about different toy lines that he got me into and then finally remembered a lot of stuff when I was a kid you watch the cartoon and stuff like that mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, so it was just a it just started about seven years ago, and Wonderful. here I am today. With this is what I got now, you know. <laughs> right. Torch for the ages, you it, know. It really uh, lit the torch. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. These uh, these here are UK exclusive uh, Baldwins. You can only get these two in the cages in the UK. They actually squared out order. Mm. Um, they're from the UK. Um, they're pretty neat pieces. Yeah. We have. You know, some A-Team mixed in there, Food Fighters, Flash Gordon, Mario Brothers, always loved Mario Brothers when I was a kid. Uh, Pac-Man, I was a huge Pac-Man fan, so I got the, the phone and 
you know, just some rare merch pieces. They made a ton of Pac-Man stuff. Oh, I yeah. actually have the Pac-Man print trash can now. Oh. That's pretty hard to, hard to find. So yeah, yeah. Uh, crash Test Dummies. Love the artwork on Crash Test Dummies. Um, I have several of their figures. And uh, most all these boxes are sealed, by the way. They've never been opened. I have the, um, the Crash Test Center down there. Oh, yeah. That's actually oh, sealed nice. as well. Um, some Karate Kid stuff. Love the love the Rocky, that Rocky stuff. Um, Silverhawks. Thunderlips. Yep, Thunderlips. <laughs> the only one I'm missing is Apollo Creed, but I'll find him someday. I oh, know. Um, Ninja Warriors. This is cool. This is a line done by Hasbro, which many people don't know, but these are cool figures. Only lasted one year in 1986. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to um, to find some of the. Um, these were basically when they they uh, came out with the graphic designs for like all of the um, the artwork on the on the cards and stuff. They had these on slide projectors and they would decide whatever they wanted to use. So I mean, that's pretty cool. But look at this artwork here. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it's uh it's pretty cool. Just the oh yeah, just the depth of you know detail and stuff. Now you put this on a slide projector and saw it on the screen, you'd be able to see it. You know, it looks really awesome. cool. So had an opportunity to pick those up so i thought that was neat uh just actually picked up this whole line last week from a buddy of mine the man ball head poppers mm -hmm. it's the whole line and they are completely they do work a lot of times they they don't if you leave them those heads on there they'll snap the the mechanism inside so and these are hard to find in good condition yeah too. pretty stoked to find those um dino riders, dino riders or starriers Mm -hmm. Anyways, what that line is, that was a different line as well. Um, I do have uh, the carded mash, mash line there. I'm only mm -hmm. missing the pink, uh, I forget what her name is. She's the pink version. Oh, okay. Um, Defenders of the Earth. I love Smurf, so there's some Smurf uh, old card there. You don't see those too often no, either on the card. No, not on cards. So we have a bunch of those. We have some, uh, a couple of Migos. I'm not really into Migos, but I had a chance to get those pretty inexpensive. So I got the Penguin. Mm -hmm. There's another one behind there. Uh, we have some Gremlin stuff. We have a Stripe there on card. I have a loose one down here. And I just picked up Gizmo this weekend at Pasadena. Oh, yes. So. And then a bunch of the Gremlin storybooks. Nice. Uh, I'm a, I collect girls toys as well. Um, this is a strawberry shortcake shelf topper. So this is what you would see when you go into a store and they would have this where your toys are. So these are pretty super rare. Um, yeah. You don't find them very often. That's in great condition. And that's, that's actually like a, a plastic, a plastic yeah. because it's usually like a cardboard, right? Yeah, they did, they did the plastic ones, but yeah, I have a transfer one over there. It's cardboard, but that one is plastic. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and then of course the big strawberry shortcake house. And then one of my key pieces here, so these are some Wazzles and some of the Care Bear Cousins. A lot of people don't know they came with accessories, so I've been hunting accessories for years because they're even worse than finding Star Wars weapons. I mean, they just, they just don't exist. Mm -hmm. um, but one of my prized possessions here, this is a uh, test shot prototype of, uh, of one of the minis. This is a uh, Lemon Meringue. Uh, and this would be basically before they uh, approved it for production. They, they would get a model of this, and then after they would approve this, they would then paint them, and then there would be a painted version of this. Um, so this is pretty rare. I just had this graded last year. I actually do have a Strawberry Shortcake Mini um, that's at CES right now. Um, same thing, it's getting graded. Excellent, So that's a great piece. Love prototypes. Um, what else we got? Some more Care Bears down there. And then Golden Girls, I love Golden Girls. That's like a knockoff of Shira. Um, that's the play set for it. It's a fantastic line. A lot of people yeah. don't. You were saying this is kind of one of your favorite play sets, so you really like this play yeah, set. Yeah, this play set is super intricate. Like, I mean, it's it's really neat. Like, that torch actually lights up. Like, there's fire oh, okay. coming out of it. Um, just how they made it. it has trap doors and, and different things, but it's just really neat play set. I love it. Um, it's just a really cool line. I know it's, I know it's girl toys, but they made killer stuff back in yeah when you look at the artwork on there it's mm -hmm. it's pretty neat so that was like a knockoff line of shira um when it came out so, uh, so yeah, it's uh galoob huh? yeah galoob made that nice uh it keeps going so that's the first wall <laughs> <laughs> um i love box art um 
we got in the corner here i have a lot of box art um supernaturals um i love glow friends the glow worms um Fortress of Fangs from Dungeons and Dragons. There's the Mamba, that's actually sealed contents in the box. Mm. Um, then we have a bunch of the Glow Friends, the actual, the bigger, uh, the turtle there on the frog. Oh, yeah. Hard to find. Um, the, the, they're like the vehicles of the Glow Friends. Lavania well, glows in the dark 80s. <laughs> I remember the Glow, uh, the glow Friends uh, Save Christmas. That yeah. Christmas special. Uh, the Paralyzer and Badger are sealed, never been opened. Uh, Death Star space station down there that's complete in the box and then that is a G.I. Joe toy box Nice. That is pretty rare. That's a vamp toy box mm -hmm. um, It's pretty neat. I found that and then I picked up those rock lord boxes when I was or the rock and bugs things boxes at Steel City Con. That's I had to right. get them just because of the artwork. I mean, you just don't see artwork like that. You don't. You don't. Um, in the corner closet we have the radio controlled Jawa Sandcrawler. That's a tough piece to find. It is. Um, I love the boxes. Again, Empire Strikes Back and Master Universe there. Uh, with the Gumby phone. And if you want to zoom in there, there's actually mm -hmm. 1966 Ideal Batman and Robin prototype figures. Wow. Um, they're pretty cool from 1966. Thank you. Yeah. Bunch of Care Bears and... Uh, Popples. Yeah, and the, the uh, My Little Ponies are mail aways. They're my the birthday mail away, so I kept my wife's my wife's birthday and my my birthday out. So mm. cool stuff. Okay. Cool nice. Uh, Carol a lot. Then, oh. uh, yeah, if you can show that, so that's yeah. all board games. <laughs> uh, I have a future plan for those, but I'll always try to get board games that uh, you know meet up with different toy lines and stuff like that. We got Muscles and uh, Bigfoot and ET and Care Bears and. Uh, Million Dollar Man, Star Wars, Ewoks, and Master Universe. Wow. Uh, so and you're going to put them in your game room. Yeah, game room, yep. I'm going to try to display them on the wall. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see a pretty rare strawberry shortcake. Uh, that's a display, that's a height thing oh. in the display rack. So girls had that in a room you can hang clothing off of and you can measure yourself. So that was a pretty neat piece. Of yeah. Um, the Godzilla, that's actually a Taco Bell display when the movie came out in the 90s. I remember that, um, yeah. So I got that display. I'm not a huge Godzilla fan, but it was a cool display, so I picked that up. Nice. Keep going here. So we got, uh, we got, that's a Pee Wee Herman. It's all 100%. Uh, figures are all complete there with the Pee Wee's Playhouse. Love that um, line. And then it's Centurion's line. Um, I have most of the figures except for the top $2,000 figure. Yeah, <laughs> the traumatizer. The traumatizer, which, you know, no one's going to get. <laughs> no. Uh, sectors, I have pretty much all the sectors. There's a couple of the bugs I'm missing, but they do have their, it's hard to see, but they do have original wings on some of them. Oh, yeah, those bugs wings are have, hard to yeah, find. Yeah, they're really hard to find. Um, love the sector lines, which is pretty neat line. Uh, Dukes of Hazard stuff. We have a grappler there, so that grappler is uh, is a kind of weird. I don't know what you want to call it, motorized transformer thing, but it's just cool. It's sealed in the box from Tommy. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like 86, 85, 86, something like that. Okay. And then we have the full line of Mego, Dukes of Hazard. My wife loves Dukes of, Dukes of Hazard, so we have some Dukes of Hazard stuff. There. Did Did they make Coy and Vance in that? In the doll size? Mm -hmm. No. No. It was just Bone Loop. Bone Loop, Boss Hog, and, uh, and uh, Daisy. Daisy. Okay. Uh, then we have the uh, Burger King glasses. And mm -hmm. if you scroll to your right a little bit, you yeah. see. So that's the hanger. That's the BK hanger display. When you would go in, you could see the Return of the Jedi BK hanger display. That is so, so awesome. That's cool. and I then love I it. I did complete my glasses run. Um, I have all the glasses there to the left. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, from 77 to 83. Yeah. Oh, so and another question I always like to ask uh, massive vintage toy collectors is, is is a classic question. What are your favorite vintage toy lines to collect and why? All right, well, people know me personally. Uh, they know probably my number one uh, toy line is Thundercats. Mm -hmm. um, Love the cartoon when I was a kid. Fortunate enough I could watch it, but I wasn't ever allowed to get the toys. I mean, it was very evil. Very, I don't want to say demonic. Well, Mom, Mom or, Rob was pretty easy. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> you know, it just wasn't a toy line that I was never 
never um, allowed to have. I don't, you know, couldn't really tell you why, but kind of knew my mind knew why. I didn't have very many friends that had that line. I mean, that line didn't last very long, and it was, you know, I didn't remember a lot of friends that had it, but I just remember the cartoon. I loved the cartoon, and then I had an opportunity to get a couple of the toys, and then this was years ago. Now the prices nowadays for Thundercats are through the roof, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, years ago, I was able to to really find a toy, and I just started going after the toys, and and now I have prototypes and <laughs> and uh, merch and items from TV stations. Like I just have uh, so much of it that I'm I'm looking for the next best thing. Like I want to have the best of the best of the Thundercat line. I'm right. Thunder Cat line. Uh, second for me is GoBots. Um, that's hard to believe. People are like GoBots, but <laughs> well, not, not for me. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money, and GoBots were cheap. I mean, compared to a Transformer, you could get a GoBot for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. So I remember my mom always getting me GoBots and uh, playing with them all the time. I loved GoBots. Um, they were a huge passion for me. Um, so, again, then I started collecting the GoBots, and, and I really got into that. That was probably like the second line I really started getting, and been finding a lot of great pieces over the years. Um, Super GoBots was a great line. They tried to compete with Transformers. I think when they stepped to the Super GoBots line, the line kind of just, just died. Mm -hmm. Transformers kept going. GoBots just kind of faded out, you know? Right. Um, so they were a knockoff of your Transformers. And then my third um, my third line has to be Star Wars. Um, again, I didn't have very many Star Wars when I was a kid. Um, but I remember going to friends' houses, neighbors. Um, I remember going to my grandparents and my neighbor there. He had Star Wars and we played the Ewok Village and the TIE Fighter and like just remember playing with that stuff and watching the movies with my parents. And that's one thing I was allowed to do. But um, <laughs> it was yeah, like Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars will never die for me. I mean, that has to probably round out my, my third my third line because I still love the movies as of today. I'm not into the modern stuff, but I, I, I love all that vintage right. um, Star Wars because there's just so many memories for that. Uh, behind mm -hmm. that is the Don Post Darth Vader masks in the box area, which you can't see. And then we have the Ewoks. Um, I have one sealed in the box behind it. I think that's the Pablo. Mm -hmm. And then we have Nippet. And then uh, the, um, the Chewbacca there. Oh, oh yeah. Um, that Petridge, Pepperidge Farms cookie container is pretty neat. You don't see that very often. No. Um, no. No one, no one was saving cookie no. packaging back then. <laughs> no, um, the job, the, all those uh, are bubble bath dispensers. Um, when we were kids, we, everybody knows what that smells like. Oh, they yeah. all smell the same, but they're all completely <laughs> cool. A lot of them never been opened. Uh, we have the bars of soap there, which are pretty neat. Uh, I have a bunch of those. And then uh, these are the 12 inch that I have. I actually have a pretty rare Boba Fett back there. That's the Empire Strikes Back box. So they did one in the Star Wars box and the Empire Strikes Back with the IG-88. Those two came out with Empire Strikes Back. So that's a pretty rare box. Yeah. yeah. And I do have an IG-88, which everybody knows how tough he is. And then you got Vader, you know, you got Stormtrooper, Luke, Leia, Han Solo. Um, great line. It's a cool line. Scroll down. I love merch stuff. Um, you know, so we have uh, we have some of the uh, cups here, birthday stuff. You got the invitations. It's cool. You know, mm -hmm. remember that when we had parties. Um, these are actually iron-on patches that you would get for for t-shirts. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, we have some of the fan club patches we got with the fan clubs. The Play-Doh sets are behind there, so I have two Play-Doh sets. They're hard to see, but mm -hmm. they're in the back. Uh, the sun catchers, if everybody remembers those, you just put those in the oven, you make them, and they would come out with plastic, and they were cool, so I got the sun catcher. Um, this is Empire Strikes Back uh, Atari game in the box. Oh, so yeah. Everything in there, so that's a pretty cool piece. It is. Everybody played the 2600. So. Heck yeah. Uh, we have some, the, you know, the Ewok. Um, Battle wagon. Battle wagon, you know how tough that is. That's mm -hmm. an Ewok village. I have sealed contents. Mm hmm. Um, the mailway Kenner stand, and I do have you know some graded figures. I'm trying to grade my whole Star Wars line, mm -hmm. so I have the graded figures there. Just got that moved back. It's yeah, he looks clean. Um, Excellent. Down below, you can see all my my graded stuff. Law last 17. There's Pop Up R2, Yak Face. Probably the, probably the highlight of it was one of them was I got back was this 
Death Star droid back from CES. It scored uh, scored an 89.3, almost perfect score. 90 would be perfect. Beautiful. Um, for it to be a loose one, that's pretty unheard of, especially a Death Star droid. Mm -hmm. There's always the black came off or the chrome. Um, so Beautiful. That, that's a cool piece. Um, been working on some of the Power of the Force stuff. Here's an Obi Wan with the coin. You don't see that very often. No, he's a rare one. Um, and that scored an 85, 86.6. So it's a good figure. Uh, Stormy Luke back there. Uh, Jedi Luke. I got uh, Boba Fett. I did a Boba Fett with the. When you mail it away, I actually had it created with the actual sorry letter that it wasn't the <laughs> rocket firing Boba Fett. <laughs> and we can replace it with another figure if you'd like. That was their answer to everything. Um, several figures I do not have here because they're at CES getting graded. I just finished my Ewok series run. I just finished picking up uh, Dulock. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the last one I needed in the Ewok series, so now it's on to droids. Oh, and they're <laughs> definitely pricey. Uh, if you pan back, you can see USS Flag. Uh, there it is. Here, but I do have a USS flag. That's right. It is built. It's one of my shelves. <laughs> so I custom built all these these cabinets here. Um, and I mean, why not? Why not have a? Oops. Sorry. Right. Why not have a USS flag as a display? Yeah, right? no, it's great. So we did. We did. Uh, we built that. Um, I have carded Star Wars. I got carded GI Joe. Night Force, we have Tron stuff down here in the bottom, oh, yeah. some Tron stuff. I'm only missing Sark, um, but they're all original with their weapons. Um, let's see where we're at now. Um, Supernatural lines, mm -hmm. very tough line, cool line. Uh, they had holograms like Visionaries. Um, I don't know if you can be able to see that or not yep. on camera, but you can see how they had the different holograms and stuff, and then their weapons glowed in the dark. Um, two tough pieces to find were the Lion and the Dragon complete. They were always missing something, and then the vehicles were super tough to find. I found them within two weeks apart, and they were all both complete. Wow. Uh, so I was super excited. I remember seeing them at Steel City Con, too. A vendor had a couple of them. Yeah, and they're just, it's a really, really neat line. So you get a chance to get into that line, get into that line. It's a cool line. Up next is Toxic Crusaders. Um, can't say enough about the Toxic Crusader. Here's a, um, you can hear it in there. It's, uh, so it's awesome. not hard enough. There's some, uh, some toxic goop in there. <laughs> Everybody loves the slime. Um, love this line, how colorful it is. It just pops. Pops, then you turn the lights out, stuff glows in the dark. Um, I did get a graded Toxie back from CAS. That's an 80 grade, it's hard to see back there, but it's in that case. Mm -hmm. Battlestar Galactica, that came out in the 70s. Um, it's a cool line. Yeah. Um, again, the figures are really, really tough to find, um, but that's a little collection of Battlestar Galactica. We both love Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing, Thing Swamp Thing, I mean, is fantastic. It's a cheap line. Uh, the the artwork, I mean, the artwork is insane. If you look at the artwork on these boxes, mm -hmm. I mean, it is it is key. I mean, like, I just found this the other week. This is a Presto Magic. Here's Swamp Thing. Yeah, it goes Swamp Thing. This is a Presto Magic uh, Swamp Thing set, which... I mean, you just don't find these, and this is sealed, never been opened. So yeah, it's completely, completely sealed, guys. That's wonderful. I mean, that's a cool piece. You're right, though. I mean, the artwork on the Swamp Thing line. It, uh, yeah, like just so good. the time, the time, the amount of money and time that they spent on the artwork is insane in the '80s. Like, you don't see that nowadays. Well, and it, and it's just it's bizarre that they made this toy line off of a five episode cartoon. Yeah. You know, you yeah. think it would have went a little bit longer. But. Yeah. Is your collection of glow in the dark? Yeah, I started ho hoarding glow in the dark. It's not the only figure I hoard. <laughs> something else everybody knows me for. So. Uh, awesome. I mean, down here, like I said, yeah. tailspin. I just started getting in the tailspin line. That stuff's a little bit tougher to find. Mm -hmm. uh, super cool. Again, I got that uh, tailspin plane at uh, Treasure Trove where Jason was. Nice, nice. That's a good deal, complete plane there. Like I said, you guys got a chance. Uh, we're going to take you in a little bit today to go see Treasure Trove mm -hmm. and check that out. I love. I love stickers. I had sticker albums when I was a kid, so these are all different stickers. There's E.T., Garbage Pail Kids, uh, G.I. Joe, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, Pac-Man, Thundercats. I mean, whenever I find sticker sheets, you know, I'll collect the sticker sheets. Power Commandos, that's a pretty rare line. Uh, it's a different line. It was like a knockoff of G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a loose set down there, and I did have a chance. They always came in two-pack or something. 
Oh, a okay. Chance to get. Cool artwork, though. I mean, it's just a neat line. Uh, GI Joes. I have no rhyme or reason. I just collect, uh, you know, whatever. Most of the '82s there, straight arms. Um, mm -hmm. Some some odds and ends. Whatever one you like. Yeah. You know, I'm not a completist. Uh, you know, when it comes to those lines, I love GI Joe, but I don't have to have every. Well, it was a massive line. Yeah, massive I line. mean, having everything in the Joe, uh, yeah. I mean, it would just, it would take forever. I mean, imagine there's somebody out there that has it. Yeah. <laughs> um, these are some rare pieces. So here's a, a, uh, a Zap, double-handed. Um, he's got double-handed bazooka, which, they remember, they changed mm, to a single. Right. Uh, he scored an 85 plus, 88.5. So you don't see them very often. Excellent. Um, and here's another, another prototype gi joe prototype there that's a cool piece that's actually this character right here mm -hmm. it's a cool prototype um and then i actually had cs i love lone ranger um i actually had cas do these cases for me so which is pretty cool they put their horses together uh that's a great presentation yeah so i actually have butch butch cavish um with his horse smoke um at cs right now so then i'll have the whole set mm -hmm. But it's the first time they did this, and I thought it was a neat way to display. Yeah. Display the line. Um, I got the big big tracks there. I don't know if anybody remembers the big tracks mm -hmm. when we were kids. That's a cool piece. You used to type in all kinds of codes, and it would do what you wanted. It kind of threw around. <laughs> it was kind of above its time, but um, again, a neat line. Yeah. Uh, probably one of my prized Star Wars pieces is this right here. So this is the Mailaway Sears Cantina Adventure Set. Mm. It came with the blue snaggle tooth. Yeah. This set is un well. It's never been played with as far as um, you can you can tell how the cardboard and stuff is. Now the figures are in there, but they're not in their baggies, so there is a blue snag in there. Um, Hammerhead, uh, Greedo, and and Walrus Man, and it's I mean you don't find these anymore. These no. are mail aways. Right. You know the box is in incredible condition. Um, I love this piece. Beautiful. I mean it's a cool cool piece. Got the whale down there. Mm -hmm. Got to have the whale. Um, the ATAT. -AT. Do a quick panoramic shot here. This is quite the room. We got ships hanging here. Yeah, I ran out of room, so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna hang some of these ships. They were on the the flag, and I need more room, so why not? No, it looks it good. Takes a little innovation to get the. Get the fishing string right. So, <laughs> You're right. I've, I've got a view hanging myself. Yep. So from what I understand, you have been a part of the Facebook community for a while and different Facebook groups and pages, and you are now running your own online auctions. So tell us a little bit about that and how that started and how that came about. Yeah, it started, I'd say five years ago. Um, I uh, was in a group called Lost Toys um, and it was pretty small. But they would have these, you know, uh, auctioneers and they would sell toys and stuff. And I was noticing I was buying all these lots and having a lot of extra stuff laying around. And, and <laughs> I forget how it started, but I was talking to somebody that was part of the group. And they said, hey, why don't you come on and try to do a Facebook Live video and sell some of your stuff? And I'm like, okay, that might be cool, you know, and get some extra money to buy more toys. You know? That's right. Uh, so I gave it a go. I had a, I had a phone. And that's all you have to do is get a phone and, and uh, you know, film yourself on camera live. People comment in the comments and, uh, you know, they bid on it like an auction. I was super successful with it. Um, actually, during my auctions, I started doing giveaways. I was, like, giving away toys to, to people. And people thought that was really great, you know. And I always thought, you know, giving back to the community is the best part of this whole thing. Because we're here. We're all collectors. You know, it's not about, to me, it's not about making the money. Um, it's it's about giving back to the community and, and being able to um, to put smiles on other people's faces. You know, people thought it was so cool because I was like, I think I was like one of the first people that were giving stuff away. Like I'd had I had a bingo basket and you'd, you'd get a bingo number ball and then I would spin the spin the thing and if your number popped out, you know, N seven, oh, okay. you know, you won a prize. You know, people were like, oh, that's cool. You know, mm -hmm. basically you just pay for shipping and you get that free prize. And I, you know, I thought it was cool. You know, it was just a way for me to give back. So it started like that, and uh, I had a pretty good following. I'd have 30, 40 people watching me on Monday nights. Um, and then um, I went and st started the greatest toy group on earth. Was in there for two and a half years, and uh, again, had a great following. Um, 
I came up with Toys for the Ages. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I'm at. So now um, I'm on to a third group, Toy Hoarders Anonymous. Toy Hoarders Anonymous, we have 15,000 members. Wow. Um, I do my auctions there on Monday nights. Uh, I've been doing it for like said, for about five years. That's where I started with the selling of the uh, of the the toys, mm -hmm. you know. And it just I have a huge crowd. People love it. They like my personality, and uh, and that's where I am today. Excellent. That's awesome. We pan over. We can start. If you want to start at the top there. So up there at the top, we have Robo Force, great great line by CBS Toys. Again, that was a one year line. Super cool, space age, suction cups, um, crazy line. I have a fan, there's a fan club mailer there that I have. That's oh, yeah. pretty neat. Uh, that Fortress of Steel is sealed. That's their playset. set. Um, I also, um, the Robo Cruiser, the Dredge, everything's there. And then it's, uh, um, to your left, there's an Erector set. So that's an Erector set of Max Steel, which is the main guy. Oh. So that's pretty cool. Super hard to find, but yeah, it's a record set. Then on to Power Lords. Power Lords is a very, very cool line, super hard to find. Uh, love the artwork, but but you have the Beast Machines. The Beast Machines were these monstrous, you know, one guy looks like He Man, but they're they're just these obscure type <laughs> tank machines. Uh, it's like the end of the line, but they're very, very hard to find. I'm, as you can see, I'm missing some pieces and stuff, but just to find them alone. Oh my gosh, so, yeah, this is extremely rare. Uh, do you think that's he man? What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then the, the Vulcan Rock, which everybody, that, that playset is one of the hardest playsets to find complete. Mm. Very, very poor quality so they put it together. <laughs> it took me three hours and a Dremel tool to put it together. I can't imagine what the parents took. But you can see it loose down there. I do have it. There it is. I have it loose uh, with the Power Lord figures. I mean, it's just, it's a neat playset. Um, very intricate uh, elevator system. Had like gears and pulleys and uh, just very well made. Well, that was made where it all made, but like the rest of it's not. But it's just a cool playset. Yeah. A little lava coming out of the top and a uh, very neat playset. You could actually, you could actually put the playsets in, in, in two sections and you had a collapsible ladder here, which I don't have together so you could play it play with them and like make them crash oh okay so that was okay. a pretty cool feature that is awesome um, some of the vehicles here that i have um they're all complete you don't hear a lot about this line a lot no. power lords nope it's made by ravel ravel was known for their models um and this is one of the toy lines they came out and, with. and it was apparently a comic as well yep. there was a comic there some more comics it was i don't know well there wasn't a cartoon for power no. lords oh. um Arco of the other world. Mm -hmm. That's a cool line. It's just basically PVC bendies uh, with glow in the dark stuff, but super super cool line. Um, you could bend the figures however you wanted to, make the different poses and stuff like that, and everything had glow in the dark weapons. Okay. Uh, just a really neat line. Yeah. Obscure. Um, yeah, I definitely don't see that too often either. Yep. And then you get into Rambo. Everybody loves Rambo. Yes. Yeah, that, that Halloween costume right there. Your point on that's that's a hard one to find. That Rambo costume. I love that. Um, and then, uh, what five-year-old wouldn't want to be Rambo? I know. Uh, and then everybody loves the movies, and we had, you know, some of the figures. Um, very, very tough line to find complete because they had so many accessories. Mm -hmm. um, so I just have some figures, you know, that I could could manage. Not all of them were complete, but well, that second wave is extremely hard to yeah. track down. And they're expensive. Yes. Awesome. That's a cool line. Go down to the next shelf. We have Dungeons and Dragons. That's the Fortress of Fangs. Super cool playset. Um, they did a fantastic job on that playset. One of the toy collectors' favorite playsets, right there. I mean, very well done. Skulls and the, the gargoyle on top. Mm -hmm. and it had like a, it had like these fangs in the bottom that would come up and trap you inside. You know, yep. You're getting a treasure chest. Just a really cool concept. It is. Uh, Snorks. Snorks. I loved Snorks when I was a kid. Now that. Display box is what they used to come in. Um, the set's pretty rare, and I actually have the whole line of snorks. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, which are it's a tough line to complete, uh, especially the red enemy down there. He's a tough one to find. He's the enemy. Right there, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the gargoyle of uh, or, or, um, the um, Garg gargoyle Gargamel. from Smurfs, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it has some noids there, and some of the uh, the. McDonald's Smurfs, as you want to call it. I forget what they were called. Ah, uh, yeah, what are those uh, called? Yeah. And who loves Voltron? Of course. I mean, the Castle of Lions, that castle is fantastic. 
Mm. That's a very, very neat place that. I was fortunate enough to find that nice and white, nice and clean. Boy, it is, isn't it? Have all the keys. Stickers are nice Stickers on are it. Nice, yeah. It's a, it's a very, I found that at Zola Town. So oh, okay. It's a good show if you guys get a chance to see Mike's shows in July. So we'll talk. Has some stampers down there, Lampo mm -hmm. Clips, which is like a like a book bag thing that you mm -hmm. hang off your book bag. Um, so the Voltron figures, now they all the enemies don't all have their little the little casket things there where they are, but all the the good guys have their helmets which are hard to find. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the coffins, some of the vehicle coffins. And then the, I forget what the skull one's called, the skull tank. Yeah. I'm missing one, missing one vehicle, and then that's that's the big that's the big uh, vintage Voltron. And then the one on the right is the new Playmates. That was a re-release. That Playmates. The Playmates that did that one. It's the one that came out about two years ago. Okay. You get at Walmart, but that was very well put together. So mm -hmm. that. No, that's a cool piece. Down below, then you got uh, Mantech. Mantech is a knockoff of Centurion. Mm. Cool, cool line. Again, you can take them all apart. They have like human heads and you know big play sets and all these wacky things you could attach to them. But just a cool line. The artwork's cool. You can't really see it out of the box in the background. So sort of oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. Then right to the right is the Shogun Godzilla. Who cannot? I mean, everybody's got to have a Shogun Godzilla. It's the best <laughs> Shogun that there is. Yes. Um, especially when it's complete. The tongue comes out. The fish shoots. Nice. Cool line there. Then to the right, we have some street sharks. There they are. Yeah. Don't have a whole lot of them. Didn't really grow up with them, but I just thought they were cool. So I you know, added them to the collection. No, they might. They might have borrowed some things from the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Then we have some AWA. Yes. Uh, good 80s wrestling right there. I love the AWA, all the knockoff wrestlers. Um, very, very cool line. Um, then we have LJN back there and mm -hmm. some WCW yeah. stuff. I love the Warriors, so I have a bunch of Warriors stuff in the back, which is hard to see. Yeah, oh, well, there it is, yep. Got the Frisbee. Yeah. That's back there. I can tell what it is. Head Squirter. There's a Ultimate Warrior Halloween costume back there. Oh, okay. Um, Warrior was awesome, man. Then, as far as the new stuff go, I like the crossovers between the WWE and the Master Universe. So, I, of course, I opened the packages, not a big deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I started get, collecting that line. It's a great line. Yeah, it's a cool line. I like it. Fantastic. 